Hello and welcome to part three, the final part of the cooling system maintenance series. In part one I looked at how the cooling system work, I dismantled and cleaned the muffler, the turbo, the elbow, I changed the water pump gasket and also took the end cap off the heat exchanger. In part two I dismantled the oil cooler and give it a clean. In this video, part three, I'll be dismantling the heat exchanger or after cooler and then hopefully putting the whole thing back together again. So now I've got the oil cool off and given it a clean up, um, I need to get the heat exchanger out. So I need to get these end caps off first. As I found out before, they're quite sealed in place because they probably haven't moved for about 20 odd years. Um, so I'm going to have to be careful because last time I used a, a chisel just to break the seal and the chisel sort of slightly damaged the, uh, the inner brass bit. So um, I'm going to try and just knock it off with a bit of wood. You can see the calcium build up there and there's bits of rubber in there from the old impeller. So the next step was to actually remove the insert and as this piece costs about 1,400 euros I was really keen not to damage it. I was trying to find a block of wood to knock the heat exchanger through and then I found this old rolling pin. Well it's not an old rolling pin, it's a new one that's been at the back of the drawer for ages so I'm going to cut that up and use that. It won't come out because of the turbo bolts now. There it is. Finally. Even though it doesn't look too bad from the outside, when you look down the tubes, you can hardly see any that are not blocked. I'm just going to give it a wash through with some aquaferta, which is the 20% uh, hydrochloric acid with safety glasses. So it's looking a lot, lot clearer than it was before. So the uh, aquaferta has got rid of about just about all of the calcium deposits in there but there's still a few little things in there which I think are fragments of the impeller you know the little tiny bits that have come off so even though this bit would catch the the actual blades I think there's tiny little bits come off and wedge themselves in there which uh, the aquifer doesn't dissolve So once it was cleaned, it was time to change the O-rings on the insert. So this is the water cooler. Everything's nice and clear in there now. You see all the light coming through. Oh, that's a really tight fit past that um, the turbo.
guess the one good thing about um, taking parts of the engine off is you can get to places you wouldn't be able to normally get to. So you can get in there with a the hoover and the wire brush and give it a good clean. Probably a touch up with paint as well. So I've got the water cooler back in. Um, and now I need to put a new seal in there. Stick a bit of Vaseline on and then put the spacer and eventually the oil cooler will go on there. There's a new seal. This is the spacer with the tiny hole in the bottom, which I think is a, a telltale to see if this, the, the, um, the seal's leaking. And uh, I'll mark the top on this one. I didn't notice it at the time, but at this point I actually missed off an o-ring from the spacer which came back to haunt me later on. You see a little T. We'll make sure that that lines up with that. And then the oil cooler just puts up against that. Of course in the, um, in the schematic this was the wrong way around. So I had to struggle with that. So that goes on there. And then the bolts go in there, but I've, I've got to remove the thermostat housing here to get to it first. So I'll just put that back in place so I didn't lose it. So the next job is to move that. And you can see the thermostat housing is actually corroded away a little bit here, which is a bit worrying. Yeah, you can see the corrosion there. So this will need replacing further down the line. Maybe not now, but later. A little bit of Duralac on there, just to uh, stop it corroding. Actually, before I put this back on, it's worth mentioning that I did check the thermostat, basically take that out, put it in a pot of boiling water, um, check the temperature and then just see if it opens up. So next it was time to replace all the hoses and fix them back into place with Jubilee clips or hose clips. So I had to remove these bolts before to get the cooler in um, but I put them back in place just to uh, so I don't lose them. I always find it's easy to put things back in and uh, put them down in some corner of the engine room and then never see them again. So I just need to put the turbo back on now. I cleaned this out earlier and lubricated it a bit and the wastegate is nice and loose. And the turbo spins around quite freely. So I gave the elbow a good clean with uh, hydrochloric acid, 20% uh, hydrochloric acid, so brick cleaner basically. I've taken all of the deposits out of there and as you can see it's nice and clean now. Uh, a little bit of corrosion on the on this bit of elbow here because that's obviously where the salt water goes through so it's subject to a lot of corrosion there. But it'll last another season I think. So I uh, just need to put that back on now. One of the things I forgot to do was mount this when I put the oil cooler back on, so I have to take it off again.
now I've just got to connect the, the oil pipes. So I'm just going to put the turbo insulator on now, just a bit of a fiddle. And finally, it was time to refit the muffler with its new welded mounting bracket. So today's been a bit of a putting it back together day. I put the oil cooler back and mounted the cooling pipes, um, put the elbow back, the turbo, well, the turbo cover, the elbow, all the exhaust pipes, muffler box. I'll give it a run through, make sure everything's connected okay, there's no leaks. I was giving a tip in Malta from my engineering mate, Jack, and uh, he was telling me about how there's a common problem of these ropes that hold the hose pipes in place of rubbing through the exhaust pipe and rubbing a hole straight through it. So uh, he advised me to replace it with these straps instead, um, which obviously don't rub as much and uh, you can actually see what can happen. Since I've been replacing that I've just noticed that that has been rubbing on a Jubilee clip down here and been wearing away so I'm going to have to keep an eye on that and maybe even replace it at some point. So I haven't put it all back together ran the engine and there was a leak in the oil cooler. Um, I thought it was a little telltale that was leaking but um, as it turned out I missed out one of the seals. The seal from the spacer was missing. I must have taken it off at the last minute and put it back together. So it's worth counting the seals that come off compared to the seals that go on because uh, a little thing like that means you've got to basically undo the job and put it back together again. So after that little hiccup and replacing the oil cooler with its new o-ring the raw water side of the cooling system was done. It was a longer job than I expected but uh, it was well worth it because now I know with the season ahead I've got absolutely clear pipes in the cooling system and the boat is ready for the new season. find this video useful and you'd like to support more maintenance videos in the future why not follow the patron link down below in the description where you can become a patron for no more than the cost of buying me a beer.